before I would always preach like, oh, anybody can do this. Like literally mm. anybody can chase the dream and be successful right. at it. Right. But are you built for it? As I travel through this industry, like people kind of don't respect like the young kids. Like if you're under 25, like yeah. people kind of assume you're still stupid or you're still kind of oh trying to find your way. One, yes. The cool thing about being a photographer and videographer is I like to become people's like best friend. What do you like about yourself? What don't you like about yourself? The version that you see yourself as how do I bring that out on camera? On the K-pop tours, it's a lot more personal experience, you know? How do you feel being a, a white female in, the, in like this this industry? Like like K-pop and, and stuff like that. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Fandom Culture. We are on episode number seven of the show. My name is Brooke Morrison. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I am Brooke Morrison. You can find me on YouTube at Brooke Morrison. I'm on TikTok now, I don't know doing some stuff. I'm not going to tell you what that is because it's a little embarrassing. Um, but I am a former radio personality and I currently work in the music industry for a record label and I love fans and fandoms. This is a place for fans, for fans of fans, everybody in between. We've had some journalists on here before. We've had Lizzo's sister on here before, Liam McHugh. And if you're an ARMY, you know him. We've had him on the show. And now... We are here with somebody who works behind the scenes and like goes on tours with some of your favorite artists. He does photography, he does videography, he does his own stuff with music, and you can take it from here, introduce yourself to the people. That was a great intro. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody <says that>. Thank <laughs> you. Um, Thanks. Uh, I go by Isne Bobo Nuyent, aka Bobo.xx. And um, yeah, I'm a photographer, videographer, um, musician. Well, True. it's so weird saying that. It's crazy. The musician part or yeah, everything else? Like just I think it's a it's kind of a trip just like being yeah. here, you know. I'm just a kid from the suburbs. Realistically, <laughs> I'm just a kid from the suburbs and trying to chase the dream, you know. I mean, yeah, as we all are. Welcome to LA. Yeah. You know what Welcome I mean? to Los Angeles. It's crazy out here. It is crazy it's out crazy. here. So what what the so as a photographer and videographer, which is I'm sure what you do to like make a living. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that? If you're just a kid from the suburbs, you made it all the way to doing what? Epic High, Eric Nam, Jonas Brothers, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. How did that start? Um, so I moved out here with a group of friends and uh, uh, I was like making music at first. I was rapping and then um, every all my friends like had their own thing, like mm. musicians and producers and, um, you know, graphic designers and stuff. Yeah. And I was like still kind of trying to figure myself out. And of course, you know, like, yeah. you know, I, music, like to make it, it takes so much. It's one of the hardest games in the world, I think. Yeah. You know, like 0.001% of people like actually like kind of make it, yeah. you know. And then um, and one day I was, I was just like trying to figure things out. And, you know, I would walk it up and down Fairfax, like giving people my resume. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, it was kind of embarrassing, but like no. I, that's what I did, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And then one day I, you know, I was like, got my second interview at like Topman on in the Grove, you know? And then oh. I was sitting there with like a group of people and I was like, dude, this is not what I moved out here for. Yeah. So I just left. And then, you know, like I went like home and I was out. like super gassed up. I was like, bro, like I got to do something. Mm. And then like, I don't know, I guess like the, I feel like the universe kind of felt my energy was like ready. Mm, okay. It sounds super foo-foo, but like, it's crazy, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I be yeah. believe me. I'm one of the first people that's like the energy is right. Yeah. The vibes. And then, yeah. um, I, you know, I met like an old group of friends mm. and then, um, they introduced me to a bunch of people. And then, uh, I met this guy. I was like, yo, like, what do you need? I can do like whatever, like graphic design, produce, yeah. make music, shoot photography, shoot videos. Like, what do you need? And at the time I really couldn't do all of this. Like, uh, I just knew like uh. I could pick it up because you know, like I was broke. I right. was like, whatever. I'm gonna it do takes. anything you want. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, "Oh, like come shoot photos at my party, you know." And there's this is uh, this event called Ultra Rare. Okay. And then, so I went, started shooting. I borrowed my friend's camera, started shooting photos and like videos, and then mm. you know, teaching myself on YouTube. Like over, you know, I had to learn in twenty four hours. So I was right. like, ah, you yeah, know. YouTube is a great resource for YouTube anybody University. trying to live that. I'm or, telling yeah, you, yeah, no, 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 because I've done a lot of like my YouTube channel stuff and everything. The editing that I've done, I've learned mostly on YouTube. Yeah, and it's it's a crazy how we have uh, so many resources nowadays. Yes, you know? yeah. And then, um, so during that time, I uh, met an artist named Dumbfounded. <laughs> right, Dumbfounded. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, he wow. gave me my first chance at tour photography. Wow. And, uh, he had me on tour with him, and he was actually one of the people that like really taught me how to shoot an artist. Right. You know, like because you know I shot a bunch of photos for him, and then you know he looked at it, he was like, ah, 
<laughs> these are kind of like not it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and then yeah. he was like, yo, like when I'm in this position, like don't get, don't like take a video of me like on the way down. Like you get to get it when I'm midair type mm. stuff. You know what I mean? And it's like, you have to wow. like capture the feeling of the entire venue. Like, you know, I noticed a lot of uh, press photographers, they only, they try to be as close to the artist as possible. Yeah. When that's not like, you're not even telling a story. Right. You know? So that's why when you see, uh, like my little carousel of uh, of things that artists post. Yeah. It's like, oh, one big wide photo, one like super close up, mm. one of the, like uh, a super cool action, throwing water, and then like fan interaction, you know? So there, it tells a story of the entire night. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of press photographers don't do that. Uh, but, you know, Dumbfounded was the one to really like teach me and how to like really tell a story. So explain who Dumbfounded is to people who might not know. Um, He is a legendary um artists that like really paved the way for a lot of us Mm -hmm. you know like because growing up i really looked up to him because you know in the media i think there's so many like clean-cut asians but he was the number one asian he was like he just came out as himself yeah and i was like wow like i relate to this guy so much more than everybody else like why is that because his style was different like you know and uh he wasn't clean cut like he had his opinions he had his like Mm -hmm. he had a lot of you energy right. which a lot of asian americans don't mm. a lot of people like play by the rules and all this shit but he completely paved the, the way for like a lot of us wow you know and he put he constantly puts on so many people that uh mm. that are doing their thing you know what yeah. i mean like he just he's 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 amazing man and i have i have yeah. a lot of my uh a lot of my opportunities like have stemmed from from him putting me on so i really appreciate him that's yeah. awesome that's yeah. a the, the way that you talk about him is beautiful because I think a lot of people, you know, you're put on like not a lot of people, first of all, get put on. You have to kind of like right, claw right, your way right, through right. things. Yeah, but yeah. the fact that he helped you through that and then you still have like an immense amount of respect for him Absolutely. and you speak this way about him yeah. means that like he actually took you under his wing yes. in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. like showed you what you what your potential was. Yeah, yeah, a, lot yeah, of, yeah. a lot of people do not get that. In this industry, dude, yeah, it's a. I I feel very blessed to be here. How old were you when you came here? I was a. Uh, I think I was like 25, 26. Okay. Yeah, so it was about. F- I think this is my fifth year in Los Angeles. Wow. No, yeah. you know what? I actually love that. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I came here when I turned 18 or I came here when I was 16 or yeah, something. Yeah. You rarely hear about people who are like, no, I was in my 20s or my 30s yeah. and I just wanted a new life. I just wanted to do something different. I honestly thought, because, you know, growing up, you're like, oh, if I don't blow up by the time I'm 21. Yes. I'm you yes. Know, can I swear on here? Yes, by the you way? can. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll leave you on YouTube yeah. so I can monetize it. But right, yes, right, yes, right. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was like 25. I was like, dude, I'm like, bitch, I'm old as fuck already. But it's funny because as I as I travel through this industry, like people kind of don't respect like the young kids. Like if you're under 25, like yeah. people kind of assume you're still stupid or you're still kind of oh trying to find your way. One, yes. You know, but yes. as a 25, 26 year or whatever out here, people were like, oh, okay, like you have like mental stability and like you're like still right. finding yourself, but you have a better grip and there's not those crazy hormones going through your body. And, you know, mm. so I think it was a great timing for me to. That's actually, here. that's a good point. Cause I, you know, I've spoken about this on previous episodes where I feel as if I wasn't taken seriously in radio. Right. Cause I had done that for such a long time and I started when I was like really young. Yeah. Um, and I still, you know, when I was like 25, 26, I was like, why am I still not being taken seriously by, you know, my bosses and those yeah. around me. And then you, you start to realize, well, it's actually nice to know that you're still kind of on your way up. Yes. Like you're still learning. Yes. Like it, nobody should ever be treated like they're an idiot. So Absolutely. I think like that's where it's like we need to really change that. Yes. Yes. But I also think it's nice to know that you still have so much life to live and there's still so much to do. And it, just because you're not 21 anymore right. doesn't mean that you haven't made it. But you're always traveling too. You're always on tour. Yeah. Yeah. And you were just with Epic High. Right. And Wusung. Yes. Shout out to all my K-pop people out here. Yes. Of course, this is fandom they, culture. They are, so um, amazing people to work with. Yes. You know, Tablo actually. He, he really put me on. Um, I showed him my song, uh, No More Talking. Okay. And then he kind of just fell in love with it. And uh, he started posting about it. And every single night, when we take the family picture of, mm. like, uh, you know, of, like, the whole crowd and stuff, right. yeah. he shout, shouted me out every night. And, like, it, like, brought tears to my eyes every night. That's awesome. I was like, I was like why does this guy believe in me so much? It's crazy. Yeah, because you definitely you know? don't get that on some of the bigger tours. Right, right, right. You know, but, you know, like, I, I work with uh, Eric Nam a lot, too, and mm-hmm. he constantly puts me on, and, like, all of us are family, you know, and I think 
going through this industry, it's important to work with people that you really like. The cool thing about being a photographer and videographer is like, I feel like the way, the reason why people keep having me back is because like, I like to become people's like best friend. Mm. You know, I like to know what like, what do you like about yourself? What don't you like about yourself? And how do I bring the best version mm. or the version that you see yourself as? How do I bring that out on camera? Yeah. You know, and like there's like a lot of uh, if you've seen like me and Eric's vlogs and stuff like that, vlogs, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, say, I say vlog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Vlogs, Korean vlog, and, whatever. Korean yeah. It's vlog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll notice like there's like a specific sense of humor that only me and Eric have, you know, That's and we, awesome. I tried to um, show that side of Eric with the fans, you know, and uh, yeah. And because uh, you are telling yeah. a story, you're telling a story for an artist. Absolutely. Because they don't get to decide in the moment what pictures are taken, what videos are taken, whatever. Yeah. They have to kind of pick from it afterwards. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did I like any of this? Do I look OK? Yeah. You know, so that it's it's a great like vote of confidence in you. Yeah. That not only have they continued to come back to you, because I feel like if I were in your position, I'd be terrified every night of like, oh, my God, I hope I get. Oh, I what totally they want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, actually. Totally am, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's what's the best part? about going on tour with some of these guys? Um, just like, I mean, it's it's insane. I don't like, there's so many things, yeah. you know? I mean, a lot of people would feel really uncomfortable in this situation, but I really enjoy like just being in chaos. Yeah. I mean, you're on a bus, 12 people, everyone's personality is different. Yeah. So you're adjusting to 12 different people. And then every single night, there's like the pressure of like getting the right shot. Mm. Um, and creating something out of nothing. Right. Has there ever been a moment where you didn't get the right shot and somebody was upset? No. See? Okay. <laughs> so that means you're doing the right thing. That means you're in the right, right space. Right. That's, and, um, that's nice. It's validation. Yeah. And But I, I feel like I go a little above and like super extra. Like I memorize the choreo to like um, of how people move, you know, okay, yeah, like yeah. all of Eric's dances. Honestly, if Eric you know one of, the, one of the dancers yeah. like you know just having to like hurt his leg, you know, and he couldn't dance that night. If they gave me an hour to learn all the things, like I'm pretty sure right. I could pick it up. Just be like, all right, I'm dancing tonight, I guess. So tell me what it's like. We're, since again, we're talking about fans here. We love the fans. I'm a fan, which is why I started working in music in general. Yeah. I've always been a fan. Yeah. And you've worked with some some big fandoms. I mean, like you, like Jonas Brothers in general. Right. Like if you're ever out with them, I'm sure that's like an Insane. experience in and of itself. Yeah. What, what is it like kind of being on those tours versus maybe some of the smaller artists? Um, I think, uh, well, it's, I think the craziest experience on the Jonas Brothers tour was like at Fenway Park. Okay. They were playing Love Bug. Okay. And all the, the lights were on. It was like, 30, 35,000 people. Yeah. And I was just like, behind the stage, I was like, holy shit, this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. That feeling is just, is a, uh, ain't nothing like it. Yeah. You know? But I think uh, on the K-pop tours, it's a lot more personal experience, you know? It's crazy. Sometimes, yeah. like in Chicago, I show up and I like just dye my hair blonde. And then I see a, a sign in the crowd. It says Bobo, blonde, period. And I was like, damn, y'all made a sign for me? I was <laughs> like, I love y'all. So Let's fun. go. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, K-pop fans is uh, one of my favorite. Yeah. yeah. It's, very, it's very personal. Yeah. It's very like, and uh, I get like very nice DMs and stuff of like, yo, thank you so much for, you know, putting your heart into this and showing us like the best moments of tour and you know there are people that come up to me every single night it's like oh mm -hmm. congratulations on the songs that you've been dropping on my personal yes. stuff have you asked Wu Sung to teach you how to sing um <laughs> I just I just I want to dance with that guy you know what I mean? okay. <laughs> he's so a great dancer have you asked Wu Sung to teach you how to dance I haven't yet but okay. you know very soon I will yeah okay. favorite Wu thing about Wu Sung he is the, one of the most wholesome people <laughs> I've ever met in my life. We were talking about him before oh we started uh, recording. He was like, "You gotta, you gotta bring Wu Sung on." And I, was I like, love hey, that no. guy with all my heart. Yeah, for real. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, we were stuck on a bus together for three months, and right. you know, I think <laughs> right. we've had a lot of like uh, amazing conversations. And he's just so wholesome, and um, he's got a really good heart. Yeah. And uh, in this industry, it's it's important to pe to keep people with good hearts around you. Yeah, and you were talking about K-pop fans. What are what are Woo Sung's fans like? Oh, they're crazy. Yeah. Oh my God, the si the signs that the they si made for this guy. Oh my God. Okay, we gotta hear the best best ones. What were they? 
It's for, okay, here. <laughs> no, I want to know. Is, I feel like you're going to say something raunchy. Is it going to be weird? It's really raunchy. Okay, um, go ahead. Let's, okay, so yeah. it was funny because uh, there's a there's a clip of this. So we were in uh, we were in Las Vegas, yeah. and on the same night, it was the BTS concert across the street. <gasps> You're right. I was there um, the weekend before. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So I, I heard it was amazing. It. Honestly. Oh my, it was crazy! Stop! It was no, no, no. I was there the same weekend because I almost went to the after party that they were all at. It was like when they were paint. It was a guy who was painting stuff. I have no idea. Did you go? You didn't we go. We were so exhausted after the show. I know Wu Sung was there, yeah. and I know Kevin Wu was there. Oh wow! And then Vanessa was there. So yeah, I know. Like I think it was the same weekend. She yeah, invited yeah, yeah. me out, and I was like, oh, I can't. But it was, yeah, so I was there. But I wow. didn't get to go to Epic High because I was, like, busy Right, right, there's, you know, stuff, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There, so there was a sign of this of this girl that says, I sold my B BTS tickets to come here, right? And so Tablo picks Whoa. it up. And then, but I'm at the other angle, opposite of him. And in the back of the of the sign that says that, it's on stage. And it's like, Wu Sung, like, please step on me or something like right. that. And I was like, oh, my, it might have been raunchier than that, actually. I just remember being like, oh, my God. Tablo does not see what's on the back of that side. Oh my god! So he just read the front. He didn't yeah, see the back yeah, of it. yeah. Oh, wow. It was great. It was wow. it was a hilarious moment that we're all just like, wow, that's, oh, that's pretty wow. Funny, yeah. As an army, that's a that's a pretty big dedication. Yeah. To Wu Sung. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To sell your BTS ticket. Yeah. To go to the Epic High Wu Sung show. Yes. Oh my god. You know what though? But that's amazing. That shows like how dedicated they are as fans. Right, you know, like it probably right. made their life to be there. That's amazing. Or yeah. they could have gone like Friday nights the BTS show, then Saturday to that's Epic true. High. You know, maybe what I mean? it was just a side. But They're I would right. love to believe that they actually. <laughs> no, that is a, that's amazing. I yeah. want to hear any others that you've seen on tour. If even if it's not Wu Sung or Epic High, yeah. you've been on tour with Eric Nam. Yeah, you've been with Jonas Brothers. Uh, who else? You've done KCON as uh, well. Yeah, KCON was amazing. Yeah. Um, that was a uh, that was it. That's what changed my whole perspective on K-pop. Really? Because I kind of walked in there blind, you know. Yeah. Uh, my homie Justin Choi put me on to the team and. Um, so they hired me and, you know, we were just like wow. documenting the day of like the, the high touches and stuff. Right. And then the show right. came. Oh, my God. Crazy. Because I you were there with like <laughs> Itzy and ATs and like who who else was uh, it that like I saw? 17 was there. 17. I mean, um, those are some performing Luna, ass yeah. groups. Oh, my God. ATs, bro. ATs. Yo. ATs yes. <laughs> is Insane. They're my insane. second. They're my second favorite boy group. They're my favorite boy group. Are like, they? They're, they're in brawl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, they did. So they did a uh, like a a perform uh, just a dance number yes. with a uh, Travis Scott song. Yeah. Oh, and stop, stop. the YG song. Yes. Oh my god. I, yes. uh, I was like, yo, these motherfuckers can really like get down they can no that was you actually know? their like debut situation they had those three <sighs> videos it was a cardi b song it was i think it was the it was travis scott song uh -huh, the and then mode. Yeah, yeah 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 and then yg and then they had i think one more wow, that they yeah. were performing at the time but they because they had come here to learn those dances oh, and also wow. any 18 if i'm saying this wrong please let me know because this was a long time ago when i like started to research their debut but they took the industry by storm insane because yeah. of that those choreos yeah, the, the insanity. Was, yeah, after I saw that, I was like, "Damn, these these motherfuckers." Are I, next still, up. I still, I yeah. still show people those videos, and yeah. they're like, "This is K-pop." Right, like, right, right, right. I was like, "You these don't guys understand. get down for real." They, you know, they're like, they're the like one of the best boy group, like yeah. dancing wise. Yeah, I think they're amazing. Actually, I think they have a great discography as well. They have consistently like shown that they can kill it every comeback. Right. So like right. they're one. I think they're one of the most successful boy groups that's ever existed in my well mind. Well deserved. Well you know? deserved. <laughs> I think they're amazing. But also I'm very jealous you got to see Itzy. Oh yeah, yeah. Fun. They're really amazing too. They're I love just, Itzy. Yeah. And it's crazy when I was shooting that. <laughs> I want to um, see him so bad. They gave me free range to edit however I wanted. Mm. No one told me I couldn't do anything. Okay. So but if you look at all all these like K-pop pictures, yeah. it's also bland. I was like, mm. where the fuck is the style? <laughs> you know? So I started putting out my own taste on it. You're right. And like all these pictures start going viral and popping up and One that, it was yeah. insane. Yeah. Oh, I've even taken non-professional pictures of some groups. I was at the ATs concert whenever yeah. they came here. I've been at twice. I've been at BTS multiple times. They'll pop off. They'll go wow. viral. Like you, people don't understand the like power just the power of right, that is it has right insane. now. Insane. Like, and it's had it for a very long time, but I think it's kind of it's finally 
arrived in the States right. the way that I think fans had always wanted it to. Yeah. And KCON is coming back this year. Are you going to do anything with KCON um, this year? I haven't no? got, gotten asked for it. Mm, but okay. um, I mean, who knows? That's in August, who I think. Knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. August maybe, or maybe. September. Maybe. Tell, well, tell someone at KCON. Okay. Hit me up if they want the best pictures. Okay. <laughs> So I don't know anybody. <laughs> hey, if you guys know anybody at KCON, hit me up as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right. out of all those groups at KCON, you're like AT's probably stood out the most to you. Listen, but who, like, who else stood out to you? Because I want to, you know, like KCON is newer groups. Yeah. At, like in I that re- year. So I have a really good picture. I think um, it was of Luna. Luna! That song Butterfly, it was super tight. Butterfly. And a dude, so she does this, I already, like, because I already see like. Yeah. You know, you got to study movements and stuff. Yeah. And then I see her in this position and I was like, I know she's about to do like a hair flick thing right now. And I just caught it at the perfect moment. Her oh hair God. looks like a, like so majestic. Wow. And then like, the, I don't even know how I got it. Honestly, I, I was just so it. locked in the zone Wow. that, and then, uh, you just, that was like one of the best pictures I've ever taken in my life. Really? Because that perfect moment. Yeah. I'm, you're you going to have to like send that to me yeah, so I can look at it. Well, yeah. That's it's, it, that was a. Yeah, that was when I was like, oh, shit, maybe, like, I'm okay at shooting this <laughs> photography. <laughs> maybe I'm okay at this. Oh, maybe my God. I'm all right at this. You I know what I mean? I which member it is, too, because I have, like, two biases in Luna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So wh- what would you say would be your best? Because I always like to ask, since I have a lot of professionals on right. here, advice on getting into it. So if somebody wanted to be a photographer or videographer in the K-pop space, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like it's even harder in just the general pop space, Yeah. you know, to do something for Jonas Brothers or something would be... Right harder you yeah. know than i feel like the k-pop space which is just budding here there's a lot of opportunity yes what would you be your best advice for that um i think uh i mean just being like a good person and mm. being someone that you can be around for an extended period of time oh yeah you know i, yeah. I feel like i have really good um like uh there's that word in korea it's like nuchi oh, okay it's kind of like you can just like read the room very well and you know stuff like that and uh i feel like i just I could read rooms and mm. I know how to make people feel comfortable and like just, you know, I could fuck around or I could just chill. Yeah. It's like just adapting to whoever you're around. And then also True. another thing is like you need to have style and taste mm. because there's a lot of these photographers that, just you know, they're like shit. cool photographers, yeah. but they just don't have taste. Yeah. And it's just the same thing as everybody else. Like, what right. are you doing to, to shake up the industry? What makes you special? Okay. You know, and are you an adaptable person to like the crazy surroundings? Because people say they want to do tour photography all the time. Right. And then I really know their personality. I could read it off the bat. And I was like, mm. you would hate this. Really? You have, to, you have to realize like, wow. not everything's a super pristine tour. Uh. You're, you're trapped on a bus with 12 other people. Rude. And then sometimes <laughs> yeah. like, you know, depending on the tour, like you don't get hotels every night. So you have to shower in the venue. Some of these venues are 50 years old. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to shit on any venues for here, <laughs> but there's the been forum, some, no, there's been some disgusting <laughs> showers that we have had to deal with, yeah. you know, and you're not always comfortable. You have to live, be able to live in absolute chaos every day. Something's always getting fucked up. So you have to constantly troubleshooting, yeah. you know, oh damn, like my hard drive died. Oh, I don't know what to do. With. You right, fucking, right, you know right. I mean? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because working, I've worked, uh, you know, back of house of concerts before, but they've been like radio concerts. So Mm -hmm. they're a little bit more controlled than I think what you guys go through. And even then it's like, we have to have eight battery packs. We have to make sure like everything's working with mics and, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's wrangling that's happening. There's a lot of things with artists not showing up or, you know, just like (laughs) their team not being the the most pleasant person, you know, things like that. It's a, there's a lot of stories from behind the scenes stuff. So I can only imagine what it's like a traveling tour that's very different from like a hometown radio. Right, show. right, right, right. And if right. that's already a shit show, mm-hmm. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, probably the best yeah. advice is to be adaptable. Yeah, you just have to be one of the most adaptable people in this. And um, if you're not, then I, I highly see. Before, I would always preach like, oh, anybody can do this. Like, literally, mm. anybody can chase the dream and be successful right. at it. Right. But are you built for it? You have to go through a lot of, yes. there's a lot of bullshit, especially in Los Angeles, mm. that you have to like mentally be prepared for. Mm. If you're not comfortable around like lions and tigers and being in shit weather like metaphorically yeah uh on the epic high tour there's actually a lot of things that went wrong but you know what it was one of the funnest tours i've ever been on my entire life yeah because all of us have like everyone's personality is so amazing that even when like fucked up shit would happen we would like complain about it but it would be really funny 
and we just keep making jokes about it and we yeah. would get through it obviously because we're family and like, yeah. we really do this shit you know that's amazing <laughs> and, uh yeah so like even the bad times are really fun times yeah as it should be though yeah as it should be Absolutely. like you should be the kind of person to see any opportunity and be like well you know it is what it is yeah and we're just gonna make the most of this. Yeah. And my advice too is like, yo, if you gonna complain, you better make that shit funny, or else you're just a little <laughs> complainer. Right, you know? right, like, right. <laughs> That's true. When you're put in very bad situations, like I, when I moved out here, I f- fell into fucking thirty thousand dollars of debt, mm. and like when you got bills to pay for, like you gonna do what it takes to pay those. I bills, know, and right? to me that doesn't even you know? sound like a lot, which is like sad. Right, 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 right. Like it's like, bro, <laughs> people are in like two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Right. Like you know, a lot of people I've I've heard from my mentors as well. One of my first interviews here was DJ Damage, mm-hmm. and Damage I worked with in radio, and even he said like. There's always something you can do, like even if like Adobe Audition costs 30 bucks a month, like you would go spend it at Target or like something else, whatever. But he was like, also, don't be scared to if you need to spend money on these kind of things. And I think you're proof of that as well as like, yeah, like you did. I live a very risky life, though. I don't recommend this to everybody. I know. And I don't either. I don't either. You have to really have faith in yourself. It's crazy. Yes. If you if you if you got the resilience, if you got the passion, if you got the drive, this the, the true payoff at the very end of it is like this is like my biggest dreams being yeah coming true you know and i'm right. still tripped out by it by it's, today. it's still like also being realistic if you're like two years in and you still aren't really seeing anything you know any return on what you've invested or something right. then you don't be afraid to pivot either and i think that's right. that's true too a lot of people right. are like oh i have to do one thing and if this one thing doesn't work out i'm a failure in life right you know right, like like right, you said right. it's like you want to be an artist yeah it hasn't happened yet yeah but you're in such a good space you've built something that can allow you to you know chase what you're going to next right 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 so like that's yeah. really what it is doors yeah. opening you know people telling you no is okay because it just redirects you in a different position Absolutely. as long i think like as that. long as like your career path is um is linear to uh to what your goal is mm. you know like i i thought of, you know like i used to clean pools i used yeah. to work at h&m you oh, know? No, yeah. but if well, i yeah. worked in those situations i worked at applebee's was it you worked at what applebee's Applebee's? Applebee's. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, yeah. for like two Great come up and a half stories, years. You know what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go on, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no. It's Somebody like in my Liam yeah. interview was like, stop talking over him. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's so mean. I'm sorry. We're having a real conversation here. You right. know what I mean? This is how real conversations exactly, go. Exactly, guys. You know? But yeah, go ahead, finish what you were um, saying. And those jobs weren't linear to what my dream was, mm. you know, but photography is. So right. it makes sense. You know, I think people, but then again, I can't say anything because people got like, fucking lives to pay for mm. and these you know so but i'm just saying if you're gonna get a job try to get a job that like or you know a realistic job whatever <laughs> that aligns with your dream you yeah know? like you know. so what would you say as a photographer if somebody wanted to pursue photography what's a job then that that would be linear to being a tour photographer uh there's tons i mean like you can go into lighting Ooh. you can go into tour management Ooh. you can uh artist assistant True. You can uh, be um, sound guys. These are be, actually good uh, you know what options. I mean? like, yeah. It's crazy. Okay, so there's this guy named Aaron Sweat on tour with us, okay. right? So he used to play in a band. He's played bass. And then he got into tour managing. Mm. Tour managing like, helps out with right. Chance the Rapper's team. Mm, and then on, wow. on, on our tour, he got uh, he got offered a tour manage, but he was like, no, I want to go into lights. Bam, lighting guy. Mm, so okay. it's like... This guy's a monster. Yeah, yeah. He's really made for tour. And like his personality, one of the most adaptable. I, I don't say like a lot of people are built for tour. Mm. Like there's truly only like three people I've met that are built for this shit. Yeah. But he's truly built for that. So like wow. Aaron Sweat, that guy is is one of the, he's insane. Wow. Yeah. No, then, it, what's crazy is whenever, whenever I was in Vegas and you know, like people in Vegas, a lot of people who like live, live there. Um, work in the clubs mostly, right. you know, like or something to do with like hotel management or something like that. And when I was uh, Yoli, who was the DJ for um, the BTS after parties, oh, wow. is a friend of mine. Sick. And I was, um, you know, hanging out with her at like three something in the morning. She had just gotten off and she had like t- gave, given the tables to the other DJ. Uh, some like random tall ass dude comes down and starts talking to us. And I guess like Yoli really knew him well, whatever. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, where did this guy just come from? Right, because right, it's like three right. thirty in the morning. Like, what? <laughs> Turns out he's the lighting guy. Oh, wow. So he's the guy who live during yeah. the show sits up in a, a thing. A, during, when he's I say that DJ sh- set. Sh- yeah, right. And he's pressing buttons basically. 
based on what he thinks Yoli is about to do next wow, with her set. Right, right, right. So that doesn't also like only happen with live music. It's happening with DJs. It's ha- right. there's so many opportunities yes. to do that, and he makes a living doing lighting for yes. clubs in Vegas. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Why there's did so that blow many. My mind? There's so many different <laughs> avenues on yes. how to do this shit. Right. There's no excuse for you not to go for it. Like there's so many things you can do. Just be creative and like really put your heart into it and search elsewhere. Like yeah. you can't just expect one thing all the time. You know, that's it's not true. like that I mean, blew my mind, though. And yeah. even seeing you, it's like I didn't even know like what you were doing was a way to make a living. To right, be honest right. with you. Uh, I did. You. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, you Yo, had, you're actually surviving doing I, this. You know, I didn't know. I go home to like, you know, all my friends that that like kind of gave up their dream mm. and um yeah. they uh they're all like techies and stuff not that like tech tech is like a bad industry to oh, go yeah, into you're from the Bay Area, yeah, yeah so that makes sense. exactly yeah, yeah and um they were really big dreamers and then you know they gave up their their dream to go mm. do the real real realistic thing mm. and i go home mm. and it's like yo like I make just as much as you and yeah. I'm living my dream. Wow. So like, why the fuck did you not just believe in yourself? Like really believe yeah. in yourself with this shit. You know, Cause I, you know, you gotta be a little bit crazy. You do have you to be really be crazy. crazy. <laughs> you gotta be a little like uh, delusional. I feel like I'm super delusional. I am too. Actually. Yeah. I like man. I, 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 t- I talk a bunch of shit. Like yeah. I manifest things and like people are like, yo, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then it ends up happening. Yeah. And I was like, who is a crazy you one? You gotta be <laughs> kind of weird for this. Right, like, right, honestly, right. and I, I think that's a badge of honor, to right. be real with you. I think that's that's dope. Everybody that I've known, I'm not gonna say they're like the best people to be in a relationship with or anything. Absolutely but I'm just saying, not. like, they're I'm great terrible. people yeah. to learn from. <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know, okay? Uh, but they're great people to like surround yourself with if you're seeking a life that's similar. And right. so that's what I mean. It's like, even if somebody sounds like a complete insane, like, weirdo to you, yeah. you might be able to learn something right so, but you can also then be like okay but i also don't want to turn out to be somebody who's like a bad person i also don't want to turn out to be somebody who's like not a good significant other you know and yeah, like learn yeah, from yeah. that and there's uh, there but, are in this industry there are very stable jobs like you yes, can work yes. at, a, at a at a record label and like you still get to go to all these jobs for That's or all these uh shows for free right yeah. and then like you get to meet all these cool artists so like it's there's cool. there's stable things in this in this space of entertainment mm. and when you're growing up in high school yeah. people don't fucking tell you these things they don't they i will say like going from radio to working a nine to five for a label now mm-hmm. um it's definitely different i still miss right. being backstage at things i yes. still miss being in front of a camera yes but i also know that i don't think i'm cut out for like you said the tour lifestyle mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or something as crazy as that um i need to find a balance of both yeah so and i will say anybody who's listening to this um you know i've, I've talked to dre about it too where being a YouTuber, being a content creator, you know, that's okay if it's not for you. You can still create content without yeah. feeling like you need to post eight videos a day Absolutely. and things like that. There's a There needs to be balance, but just know that there are extremes. You can go way one way right. and be like, you know, just you're you're great on tour. You're, you're great like in dusty, gross showers, like, oh, you know, yeah. things like <laughs> that. Or you can like do the nine to five, work from home thing. Like there's so much to do in yeah. music. So don't, don't give up on it just because one thing didn't work. Yeah. Hey, how do you, f- how do you feel being a, a white female in, the, in like this, this industry, like, like K-pop and, and mm. stuff like that? I've always I always wanted to ask you this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, first of all, I don't think I'm necessarily in it. Being a non-Asian. Was in pop. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was in pop music before this and then hip hop before that, which that was even kind of more of a, Whoa. oh, I don't know if I belong here type right, situation, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, which I talked to Damage about in like the first episode of this too. But um, now I, I work for Disney and Marvel now. So I work for like Disney and Hollywood Records. <laughs> for that Fuck side yes, dude. yeah i know it's, it's dope that's my like Sick. nine to five right but you're right i mean it does feel like sometimes i am encroaching i, I feel like i am what is cross- encroaching me that's crossing a, th- a boundary oh, okay like i it, feel like it, um it. this space is not for me yeah and uh i i try to be as respectful as possible Absolutely. when it comes to these kind of things yeah. but i also know that many of the people that i've talked to in k-pop um have been like well you know not only do we we don't you know, want anybody to be able to enjoy this and uh, we want the fans from all over the world and everything like that. But as long as you're being respectful and as Absolutely. long as you're representing yeah. it in a positive way and in a way that does, you know, uh, sh- shed light on the culture more than it does on like, oh, my God, it's you know, K-pop and dancing right, and makeup right, right, and, you know, right, blah, blah, yeah. blah. That's what they actually appreciate. Yeah. So I always try to make sure that when talking to people, 
especially for a show like this, you know, we are being that we are representing it in a way that we want to share the culture. We want to share the love. We want right, to share the right, positive right, things right. about it, the power of it. Yeah. I mean, I think K-pop in and of itself is such a cool mix of I've always been really interested in other languages and other cultures yeah, and everything. So yeah. once I found K-pop again, because yeah. I did in 2009, oh, came oh, back to it. Oh, came, I was with the Girls' Generation was the first Whoa, group that I fell OG, in love with. Okay, okay, hell yeah. And then came back whenever I fell in love with BTS. Wow. So I've been able to I kind see. of be like a before and after mm-hmm. type, you know, of like where it was whenever I first started to like it and where it is now. Yeah. The power of it is just such a beautiful thing. So I Insane, do. Yeah. yeah, I do. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I should be talking as much about it as right. I do. Yeah. Because I, I do want it to be looked at as. A, yeah. And I want to be amazing. as respectful as possible. Basically, yeah. that's how I feel about it. It's like sometimes, yes, I do yeah. feel like being white as fuck. Because yeah. I am white as fuck. Yeah, like, yeah, there yeah. is no drop of color in me. I am every kind of European you could think of. Um, I, I just want to make sure that I'm representing it in a very right. You know what's the greatest way. part about going to K-pop shows? You look at the front row, and it's mm. all, like, non-Asians. Yeah. And yeah. I, what, when I was on the, the first time I experienced that was, like, on the Eric Nam tour, I was like, I was like, holy shit, this is, like, a universal thing. One, yes, 1,000%. Music really brings people together, no matter, like, it does. I don't even understand this shit, but, like, I love it. Well, you here's know, the thing about K-pop too is like it's not just it's not just music yeah, at that point. It yeah. is the culture of K-pop. Right, it is right, just right, like right, right. like I said, that's why this is called fandom culture because right. K-pop showed me again the power of fandom. Right. The power of having this collective group of people and I love Army BTS Army I think is Hey, they're the best. Purple Hearts on anything. Let's go. 